Rondo Rondo went viral after he linked up with NBA Youngboy and was becoming one of the hottest new rappers in the game. But after some shocking news just broke, his career could be over for good. This is the rise and downfall of Rondo Rondo. On December 8, 2023, the FBI worked with the Savannah, Georgia Police Department to arrest Rondo Rondo. They pulled him over around midnight, but it wasn't for a simple traffic stop. The feds had a target on Quando, so they sent the local cops to hunt him down. Quando and three of his homies named Lil D, Stro, and Hollywood were all named in the fed case and were charged with conspiracy to possess with intent to distribute fentanyl, cocaine, and more. Quando pleaded not guilty and was released on bond, but if the case goes to trial, he could end up serving 20 years in prison. Getting hit with the fed case is never good news, but Quando was already facing a state Rico in Georgia. Back in June 2023, Quando and 18 other dudes got hit with a massive 49 count indictment. Quando was charged with two counts of conspiracy to violate Georgia's Controlled Substances Act, one count of participating in criminal street gang activity and use of a communication facility in commission of a felony involving a controlled substance. According to the paperwork, Quando took a trip to Mack in Georgia on June 4th to buy weed from his blood. The state accused Quando of being a leader of the Rolling 60s Crip set in Georgia, and if they're able to prove he was calling the shots, then he could catch more time for any crimes his homies committed. When he was arrested in June, the prosecutors wanted to keep Quando locked up and asked the judge not to give him bail. But the judge decided that since Quando has to travel for his career, he could stay free until the trial. This isn't the first time quando has been accused of street gang activity, though. Back in 2019, the state tried to get rid of his probation after he was convicted of possession of a firearm by a minor. Then in 2019, Quando threw hands with an op at the Oglethorpe Mall and got hit with charges for a fray and violating his probation. The judge gave him bond on the probation violation, but the state tried to get rid of the probation again and said that the fight was between rival gang members and accused Quando of violating the Street Gang Terrorism Act. Then there was even more drama in the case after Quando's lawyer had to quit. It turned out that he was working with the dude Quando threw hands with too, so Quando hired a dude named Jeffrey Alls instead. Jeffrey said that the state had done a lot of unethical things in this case, and eventually the state gave up on revoking Quando's bond and dropped the accusation about gang activity too. Jeffrey fought hard for Quando, but now he's working with the Chatham County District Attorney's Office, which is the one who just hit him with a RICO case. Jeffrey can't work on the new case since Quando used to be his client, but the whole situation is kinda sketchy and some people are worried Quando's not gonna get a fair trial. A month after Quando posted bond for the Georgia State case, he almost went back to jail after he crashed his whip. According to court documents, Quando was speeding down the highway when he crashed, and first responders gave him Narcan since he was showing signs of an overdose. Narcan is used for people who overdose on opioids, and part of Quando's bond agreement said that he was supposed to stay away from illegal drugs. Quando caught another break and didn't get locked up, but his luck ran out in December when the FBI got involved. Here's what's really crazy about the situation. If Quando gets convicted in the federal case, he could end up doing 20 years, but none of that time would matter in the Georgia State case. So if the situation goes left and he ends up getting time for both of them, he'll have to go serve his full sentence in Georgia right after he gets out of the feds. It's a lot of bad news for Quando right now, but he's not letting it slow him down. A couple days after he posted bonds in the Fed case, he dropped the track cash and raps. Thug nigga from the gutter. No, the money can't change me. They trying to do me like young thugger. Hit the county for some gang shit. Yeah, I'm fully loaded. Blue double R. That's when I lane switch. And county chain gang. I get out and going back. I got a bounty on my name, pull up, get the hundred racks. There go, you know my youngin, Trey, ain't speaking on who got waxed. Quando isn't just facing the loss in the court system though. He went through a tragedy last year after his cousin Lil Pop was shot and killed right in front of him. They were riding around LA together when three shooters caught them and started letting off shots, and Pop was tragically pronounced dead at the hospital a few hours later. Lil Pop was facing his own RICO case in Georgia and was supposed to see trial just one week before he was shot and killed in LA. Him and 10 of his homies were accused of going on a massive crime spree and stealing over 10 cars in one day. Pop was also facing two other cases for fleeing from the police, burglary, theft, and cruelty to children. According to court documents, Pop did the race and got into a high-speed chase with the cops from Georgia to South Carolina. Quando raps about Pop all the time, like on the track ABG, where he said, Through the cut with Pop, we gon' bang on him. Leaky in the back seat with that chopper, we gon' swing on him. And on my draws be Ralph Lauren, 23 shots to his car, Michael Jordan. And on his new track, Cash, he raps, I get on them drugs and scream for a lot. Every morning, I'ma hit that rug and do my vata. I'ma buy a brand new bench truck like I'm Rallo. It ain't a night that I don't think about my thug, R.I.P. Pablo. And on his album Recovery, Quando aired the shooting situation now on the track Long Live Pop and raps, I think that I'ma throw the towel in on my bandana. 
I think somebody out Crenshaw ran down and hit my man up. I'm gonna give my life to a lot. This a dirty fan up. I wish I bulletproof that Tahoe, jumped out with that hammer. That hurt my heart. I watched my partner die right by a gas pump. Look to the sky, a shooting star, bet that I'm the last one. Wando Rondo's probably the biggest rapper in Savannah right now, but he had a name in the streets way before he ever hit the charts. When he was two years old, Quando's parents got into a fight and a hot iron fell on his leg and burned him. His mom took him to the hospital, but then CPS came in and snatched Quando away from his parents. He lived with his dad's aunt growing up while his dad went in and out of jail and his mom was addicted to drugs. Quando called his aunt grandma, but she was the reason he caught his first charge when he was just 11 years old. Quando got into a fight with one of his cousins and his grandma called the cops and got him put on probation. That's when Quando started smoking weed, and over the next few years, he went deeper and deeper into the streets. Quando kept failing his drug test and had to go back to Juvie a couple more times. Then they sent him home with a leg monitor. He wasn't gonna just sit around the house though, so Quando would let the monitor die and then sneak out on the streets. His parole officer eventually caught him though, and that's when Quando got sent to a boot camp for a few months. He was supposed to be in there for a year and a half, but Quando kept on fighting other kids and ended up getting sent back to Juvie instead. After he got out of Juvie that time, Quando only stayed out of trouble for a few months before he got picked up for stealing a cap gun and a bike. He served more time and got put on house arrest again, and by that point, there was no turning back for him. He had already dropped out of school in the sixth grade and was too young to work a normal job, so Quando put both feet in the trenches and started hitting licks. He was kicking in doors and selling stolen TVs, then he decided to hit up houses in a nicer part of town. But on his first robbery in the rich area, Quando tripped a silent alarm and got sentenced to another 15 months in juvie. Going to juvie again didn't slow him down in the streets at all though, and when he came back out, he started carrying guns and was catching more serious charges. According to rumors, Quando even killed one of his homies back then who testified against him. There's no evidence to back it up, but on the track, Letter to You, he raps, put my trust in DJ, then that nigga testified on me, double back, come strapped up with the Mac. That day he tried to put that fire on me. No face, no case, I emptied out that 4-5 on me. In the city where I'm from, I swear it's kill or be killed. You gotta stay up on your pivot. Anybody can get it. Then on the track, run me up a check. He said, Glizzy leave a fuck nigga leaking. I'ma leave a fuck nigga bleeding. My youngins, they gon' work for no reasons. Everything blue like four seasons. Better ask Dexter how I ripped the Beretta. I put that nigga on the stretcher. Bury him just like my treasure. It's not clear if Quando really took out his own homie back then, but we do know he started taking losses in the street around the same time. When Quando was locked up in Juvie one time, he became tight with a dude named Quafi Murphy. Then while Quando was locked up on a gun charge, Quafi was shot and killed during the gun sale that went left. A dude named Juki ended up getting hit with a life sentence for murdering Quafi, and Quando says that was the first homie he actually lost. In an interview with DJ Small's Eyes, Quando said that he's still really heartbroken over the situation, and it was the first time he realized death was real. A lot of people only heard about Quando and his homie Lil Tim after they were involved with King Von's death back in 2020, but the two of them were wrapped up in one of the deadliest gang wars in Georgia history way before that. Quando and Lil Tim both repped the Rolling 60s Crips and linked up when they were teenagers. Tim wasn't just a Rolling 60 though, he was also affiliated with a crew called Only The Mob aka OTM, which was a set made up of dudes from the Rolling 60s, GDs, and other gangs. Quando's cousin Lil Pop was rocking with them too and in 2016, they sparked a massive wave of violence in Savannah. Only the mob had major issues with sets like VBS and the 1100 Block Gang, who were both clicked up under the 2X gang umbrella and rocked the color purple. On December 11, 2016, a dude named Javante Reed was shot and killed in the street, and an alleged Only the Mob member named Craig Weston was booked for the murder. Then a few months later, a 17-year-old named Tristan Gray was murdered, and the U.S. Marshals got involved with the case. A couple weeks later, another teenager named Kevin Jackson was gunned down in BBS territory. A dude named Rassam Sharp pleaded guilty and got hit with a 20-year sentence. There were six different shootings in 10 days across the city, but it wasn't even close to being over. And on July 5th, 2017, the war in Savannah took another tragic turn. Three only the mob dudes stood on the ops and started letting off shots into a group of people on the street. They caught two 1100 block affiliates and sped off, but that's not where things ended. The cops caught up to the only the mob dudes fast, so they tried to outrun them and get away. During the chase, an innocent dude named Scott Waldrop tried to get people out of the way of the only the mob member's car, and they ended up running them over and leaving them dead in the street. Then after they killed Scott, the only the mob affiliates crashed and two of them died in the wreck. One of the dudes who died was named Stucky, and he was tight with Lil Tim back then. 
their homie Jerry Chambers was the one driving the car that night, and he ended up getting charged for three murders over the situation. He had been booked for a different shooting in 2016 for robbing a woman at the mall, and after he took the murder case to trial, he lost and got hit with a life sentence. A couple months after the drive-by and chase, another dude named Rafi Williams was shot and killed. It's not clear exactly what went down, but another dude named Tay and his crew got into a shootout with Williams' homies, and Williams was tragically pronounced dead that day. Less than a week after that, another teen named Jaheim Morris got shot in the head and was rushed to the hospital by his homies. He was affiliated with the 1100 Block Gang, and street rumors say only the mob was behind the hit. But then news broke that he was actually in the car with his homies in the middle of a drive-by, and one of them accidentally shot him while they were spraying at the ops. It's not clear how much Quando was really involved with the war between only the mob and the 2X crew, but he's dissing his whole career on tracks like Purple Baby when he raps, I swear that all I know is murder, baby, riding around with them bags on me, smoking purple. That 30 poking out my pants on me, I'm rocking purple label. This for that one who put them bands on me, we gon' murk em. Roll up a blunt of that new dead homie while sipping purple maple. Lil Tim is famous for killing King Von after Von swung on Quando, but rumors say he was involved with way more bodies before that and killed four dudes from 1100 block. And on the track Dead Guy, Quando rapped, walked around that corner with that Glock in your hand, let him know what's what. Nigga tried to kill Lil Tim, he got shot in his hand, that's why we smoking burning. Screaming that number that come right after 10. Late night, we screaming murder. Quando allegedly confirmed Tim had four bodies before Vaughn on the track Purple Baby and raps. Hellcat versus that Hemi, we straight dust a nigga. Do the dash in the foe runner. Way before that boy, he put foe on him. I'll be down, they up the skull on us. I done dropped the low, I'm in the Nola thugging. Here they go, claiming they want smoke until they bro under. Quando, Tim, and the rest of their homies were heavy in the streets back when Savannah was one of the most active cities of Georgia. At the same time, Quando always wanted to make it in the music industry and started dropping tracks in 2017 when the beef with the 2X crew was really heating up. After he got out of jail in November 2017, he dropped a track I remember on YouTube and popped off immediately. A couple of months later, Lil Baby hopped on the remix and helped Quando get even more buzz on his name. And in June 2018, he linked up with the dude who helped him take everything to the next level. NBA Youngboy made Quando his first artist on his Never Broke Again label, and that's when Quando really hit the spotlight. Youngboy and him were tight from the jump, and Quando was ready to take on any beef that Youngboy had in the industry. Having Youngboy backing them pushed Quando's career in a big way, but it's also why he ended up getting involved with King Von's death. Before Youngboy and Von started beefing, Quando was cool with Von's homie Lil Durk, and they even linked up in the studio. Youngboy and Von started having issues after Von dissed him for capping in his raps on IG Live. Then they started going back and forth about their baby mamas on social media, and Youngboy allegedly took a shot at him on the track Dead Trolls and Raps. Travel around with hella troops. I got pictures of you, little pussy bitch. Plan on staying in something in Atlanta too. Won't get up with me, but I don't fuck with you. All in Pampers, Sunset tripping too. Bounty hunter bitch, trying to eat the crew. Quando got involved with the Twitter beef and started taking shots from Von's homies. And that's when Lil Tim hopped in and said, niggas from Chirac better chill on my nigga Quando. It was clear that the beef was heating up, but nobody expected it to end with Von getting killed right when he was becoming a superstar. Quando made it out of the situation alive and didn't face any charges. But now he's dealing with two cases that could get him locked up for years. He beat the odds and became one of the hottest rappers in the game and survived the streets of Savannah. But right now it's looking like he might do some time.